All right, so let's take a closer look at the Ender 3 Max. So it does have a pretty decent sized footprint. You can see it here on the table. And we have a volume of 300 by 300 by 340 tall. So, all right, so starting here on the top, we can see still have a pretty small 2020 channel on the top. And then we've got 2040s going down. So there is no spool holder up here. And the way this printer is designed with the channels going on the inside, it's really rigid up here, which is really nice to see. Flipping the printer around, you can see the lead screw has a little guide up here. And this is just to prevent from bending the lead screw by pulling on it and kind of keeping it in place. There is a little bearing inside and it does move around. So going down from there, we can see our extruder assembly, which is metal. Glad to see that's standard because the plastic ones are not as great. So we got the stepper motor underneath that drives the gear, which pushes the filament through. The little clips are already installed in the couplers, which also comes with extras as we saw earlier. Going this way, we can see we have a filament detector and it is a plastic body, but it does have, looks like a brass insert to help it from eating into itself. So very happy to see those kind of details. And it is brass on both sides. Also, while we're over here, we can see the brass bushing for the lead screw. It does have a spring here. So this is an anti-lash, meaning it keeps it from just falling down. So there's like a little bit of tension. So the weight of the whole axis doesn't force it just to fall down. So right over here, we have the X-axis motor and a little cover right in front of it. And this is where we plugged in that X-axis in-stop switch. On the other side here, we can see we have the power supply that mounts straight to the rail. It's got a little fan here, our voltage settings, and a little cover here with the on and off switch. It is fused and this is where we're going to plug in our cord. So let's check out the hot end assembly here from the back side. You can see the rollers, the bottom roller, which is adjustable. So we do have dual axial part cooling fans. The heat block has a silicone sock on it. Going to the front of the hot end, you can see our PTFE tubing. Also has a clip there going inside to the heat brake. And it does appear to be Creality's normal heat brake that they've been using forever. I guess MK9 or whatever MK it is right now. So our wiring is already tethered with the tube. So we can see a little closer here the two fans on each side. We got a large heat brake fan and the whole thing is kind of like a v-shaped design i guess accommodating the coolers so yeah it looks pretty promising we'll see how well this hot end does so here we have the x-axis belt tensioner so if you need to adjust your belt this is where you can do it and going to the other side that's that little cover here got a qr code this is our x-axis end stop switch going down straight from there we have the z-axis switch and that's where it plugs in so this is what stops the z-axis on the way down. So as we saw, we get a large glass build plate with the perforated coating, which sticks when it's hot and then pops off when it cools off. Nice Ender logo there. Pretty easy way to get it off. Just push these tabs over on each side and then pull it out. But mostly you don't have to do that because you know the prints should pop right off as they cool. And just another reminder, do not use the metal spatula that was included on this coating or you will ruin it really fast. So going down, we can see the aluminum heated bed and awesome to see that it is also insulated. So the whole bottom part has insulation, which is gonna help it heat up really quick. And we definitely need that for this size bed. We got large adjustable knobs with the heavy duty high quality springs, six rollers total on the bed, three on each side, our 40-40 Y-axis rail, the belt, idler, it's adjusted here on the sides. Here we have the manufacturing sticker, what our printer is called, the volume we can print, the size of the machine, 350 watts of power, and weighs 9.5 kilograms. And right beneath that, we can see this is where we're going to insert our micro SD card and also connect with a micro USB port. So one thing I want to mention real quick, if you like to customize, it looks like you can put a tray in here or print a tray out that can live right under here, kind of like on the older Ender 3s and Ender 3 Pros. So that would be a pretty good mod to do. So looking to the right of the printer, we have the display. Let's go ahead and peel the protector off. So this is an older style Ender display with the rotary knob. I know a lot of printers already moved to touchscreen and whatnot else, but I feel like this is still relevant, especially for a budget printer like this and gives you so much for uh, the price. And also being a little nostalgic to me because the Ender 3 was one of my first printers and you know it had the screen. So it really brings me back to those first days. All right, so we're at the back of the printer again. So this is our z-axis motor so our wiring comes from the bottom and then goes up to all of this stuff here you guys can see how the spool holder sits there so it does move around quite easy and then you know it's adjustable and you can even fold it away or even take it out it comes off pretty easy and it does have a nice little foot there that it sits on so and also all the frame pieces here have caps everywhere including the tops so there's no sharp edges anywhere so that's nice the heated bed wiring here is strain relief very nicely and it just routes under. This is our Y-axis motor. It does have a little idler bracket here. 
Y axis end stop switch. And I really like how they have this frame here, which secures the Y axis here from wobbling around. And you guys can see the power wire going there and then into the board back there. So all the wires kind of flow from there and go everywhere. So, and one thing I wanted to note before I forget that when you are assembling it and moving the axes around by hand, I don't know if you guys noticed that if you do it too fast or rapid, you can see the screen coming on. So it's okay to do it a little bit, but you know, if you do it extremely fast, you could damage the electronics. So be careful with that. Same thing with the bed and the Z axis, the motors do produce power and feed it back. So, so if you get it to flicker here and there, it's not a big deal, but don't do it on purpose because it could mess something up. All right, so let's grab the power cord and we're gonna plug it in right here. Now again, make sure your power supply is switched to the correct voltage. All right, so let's hit the power button here on the side and it lights up. So we got a little Ender logo there and it booted up. You guys probably can't see anything. The screen does kind of have an angle where it points up. So, so which is kind of nice because you usually look down on the printer. So I do like that. So before we look at the menus and whatnot else, I want to home the printer to make sure all the axes work and then also preheat it. Now, before I'm going to click the home button and we probably should have done this before we even powered on, but we need to check, make sure that our Z axis in stop switch here is in the correct position. So I'm going to go ahead and just go down here i'm gonna make sure that my z-axis gets clicked before my nozzle even gets close to the bed and sure enough that's the case here so we are pretty safe and the reason you want to check for that is because you don't want your nozzle to you know go into the bed and start scraping into it so if you're really nervous that something maybe is not right you can go ahead and pull out the the glass build plate and then figure it out and then once you're comfortable put it back in so, all right so i'm gonna click on the knob here and this is how you operate the screen by clicking and turning and we're gonna go to prepare and then out of home so i'm going to click it and we can hear okay so from what i can hear here the z axis is definitely loud going up and down but the y and the x were quiet so this sounds like it does have the silent steppers all right so the printer home so that's good to see and our nozzle is definitely too high from the bed but what i've noticed here is it looks like on mine here they ran the bed down all the way and compressed the springs which i think is going to work out about right when we go to level so that's the next thing we need to do is we need to level the build plate now this part you want to definitely take your time and do it so this is an absolutely necessary step so let's see if the end of three max here it has any kind of bed leveling assistant and scrolling around guys i cannot see anything about bed leveling so what we're gonna have to do here is the old school way and the way that works is we're gonna out of home it and then after we home it we're gonna manually move everything around ourselves so this is going to be a completely manual leveling so i'm going to go ahead and home it again just to make sure and then once it homes, we're going to go down and click on disable steppers in the prepare menu. And that's going to release all of our steppers where we can move them by hand. You want to be really careful not to push down on the X axis so it doesn't, you know, bump it out of the way. And now we can move the Y here, the bed and the X. And so for this, you're going to need some kind of sheet of paper. I'm just going to use some printing paper here and we're going to start with a corner here. Now, since we're way off, we're going to need to raise the bed roughly everywhere the same first. So kind of eyeball it. All right, so I got the whole thing lifted up. So now we can start with this corner here. So don't make that first corner too close on the first pass. Let's go to our next corner here. Okay, so we're already too close to the bed. So keep your paper between the bed and the nozzle. That way, you know, you don't scratch up the bed. So now we're going to go to the back and then to the other side. So now that we know that we're, you know, we're starting to get close before we continue and, you know, micro adjust it, we need to go ahead and preheat the bed. So again, we're going to go to prepare. And I'm going to go ahead and go to preheat PLA. So as it's heating up, we're going to take it a few minutes because it is quite a large bed and it's glass. I'm going to go ahead and keep going around and checking. All right, so I know I'm really close and the bed is getting toasty. It's at 51 right now. So yeah, it's still going up and then it's going to 60. All right, so I'm pretty happy with four of the quarters. And now I'm going to go to the center and check that and that feels about just right it might be a little looser so if you need to bring up the whole thing a little bit or down you can turn each knob on each corner you know just a little bit of a turn the same on each side and you can make it go up and down on the whole platform all right guys so that should be good right there so it's not too complicated just take your time even though this is you know completely at manual leveling it's not very hard as you saw you just you know move it around now one thing you definitely want to do is you want to go back to prepare and then out a hole 
let it home and then disable the steppers and then check it again because you never know you might have bumped this off as you were leveling it so i'm going to disable steppers and i'm just going to recheck everything really quick and everything's still the same so yeah and this printer having a glass bed it is pretty flat you know once you're pretty close you're going to be fine overall all right so let's take a little quick look here at the display so if you use the older creality this probably looks pretty familiar so we got the name here ender 3 max so this is our nozzle temperature so we got a target temperature and then actual temperature our fan speed here is 100 percent the x y and z positions the feed rate which is the speed and it is adjustable by just spinning this knob you guys can see it changes so if you want to go faster or slower right on the fly you can do that so here we have a progress bar with the percentage finished and the time that passed and on the bottom here we have information and right now it says ender 3 max ready and you control everything with this dial and then when you click it you get another menu and scroll through it like this so it's an older design but it works very well so here we have prepare and this is where we've been going we got move axes so here you can move them individually including the extruder we got auto home set home offsets disable steppers and this is what we did after we auto home to level so we can move it around by hand and then we got our preheat pla and abs lower so yeah so most of your place where you're going to go is into the prepare here and then we have some control and you know here you can control the temperature the motion filament and other settings here here's where we're going to read the sd card which is not inserted at the moment we also got change filament and then language changer and about the printer we are on marlin version 1.0.1.6 so that's the date of it yeah pretty cool